this is a 56 year old male farmer with a swelling in the right side of the nose since three years. Uh, he noted the swelling three years back, started as a small swelling, gradually increased to the present size. One year back, the swelling got ulcerated, healed after taking antibiotics. History of itching in the swelling and noticed blood discharge from the swelling two to three times, last episode one month back. There is history of exposure to sunlight frequently, no history of exposure to radiation, any chemical, no swelling or other lesions in the face and neck. He consulted a local government hospital and they took a biopsy from the lesion one month back and was referred. Uh, comorbidity wise, uh, he is a known diabetic and hypertensive on treatment, history of biopsy from the lesion and no other surgeries. Personal history, there is no history of substance abuse, uh, no similar complaints in the family and uh, he is from a middle income socioeconomic status. On examination, examination was done in a well-lit room, patient is conscious, oriented, cooperative, moderately built and nourished and uh, vitals are stable. On local examination, there is a non-pigmented ulceroproliferative lesion of size 1 into 1.5 cm in the right side of the nose uh, in the ALA region involving the part of the ALA tip, sidewall and dorsum exceeding about 3.5 cm from the root of the nose, 1.5 cm from the right ala facial groove, 0.5 cm from the midline, inferior border is 1 cm from the nostril margin on the right side and edges are raised with irregular surface. There is no discharge from the lesion and surrounding area around the ulcer is normal. On palpation, the inspectory findings were confirmed and dimensions of the ulcers were confirmed. There is no local rise of temperature, tenderness and induration around the ulcer. Uh, raised edges with the floor irregular discharge and there is no bleeding on touch. Base of the ulcer is formed by the lower lateral cartilage and ulcer profile. Surrounding skin is normal and there is no regional lymphoid enlargement. Intranasal, intranasal examination is normal. Systemic examination is normal. And donor sites were examined and they were found to be adequate and there were no scars. So the diagnosis is, this is a 56-year-old male farmer with a non-pigmented ulceroproliferative ulcer, 1 into 1.5 cm involving right side of the nose of 3 years duration with gradual increase in size with occasional bleeding, history of biopsy from the lesion, mobile lesion with no intranasal extension, most probably basal cell carcinoma. Yeah, Ankita, Dimmi is actually, I think, rejoined. Uh, he had some power issues. So I think he has yes, to rejoin. Dimmi, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. yeah. I think Ankita has done the presentation for you. So she has come up to the diagnosis part. Okay. Uh, you want me to stop sharing the screen or you can speak and I'll continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dimmi, uh, yeah, you share the screen. I mean, uh, Ankita, you share your screen and Dimmi can speak. Yes, yes, sir, I can speak, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you can switch off the video if there is a net, uh, if your bandwidth is low. Okay, madam. Madam, my first diagnosis is basal cell carcinoma affecting the right side in nose. Okay, and... Uh... Uh, yeah. sir. You would be taking a biopsy to confirm your diagnosis? Sir, pa patient, uh, uh, patient already had a biopsy. Had a biopsy. Already had a biopsy. Uh, okay. sir, uh, my plan uh, sir, as a patient with the biopsy is a, a basal cell carcinoma. I will uh, do the whole pre-op investigation for uh, anesthesia fitness. And um, the, I will, uh, uh, after taking the consent from the patient, and under general anesthesia, I will go for a wide, ex wide local expression of the tumor with 0.5 centimeter margin. And um, I will send the specimen for frozen suction. And the frozen suction comes negatively. I will give a definitive club cover. My first plan is a nasolabial flap cover in two stages. Uh -huh. It's on social, huh? Is it social? Yes, I'm 
Ankita, can you go back and display the picture without turning? Yes or no? Ma'am, this is the one you are talking about, ma'am. No, uh, is there a frontal view? Oh, this one, ma'am. Okay. Mm. Me, can you describe what all areas are affected? Man, the, the lesion is affecting the right side of nose with um, the part of right ala, right lateral wall of nose with small extension into the dorsum and tip of the nose. Dorsum. Dorsum, uh, um, ala, lateral wall, and tip of the nose. It doesn't go. What are subunits? Involved? What are the subunits of nose? Oh, the nose has got nine subunits: and the dorsal, do, dorsum, tip, and columella, and paired lateral wall, ala, and um, soft tissue triangle. Okay. Triangle. Soft okay, so which all subunits are involved? The part of ala, lateral wall, and tip of the nose. How much of each subunit is affected? Uh, the um, lesion is from the um, from can the you, ala. Ankita, can you go to the lateral view? I think that will be better. This one, ma'am? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Madam, about 0.5 centimeter of the right tail. Mm -hmm. Describe it as percentage. Madam? Describe it as percentage. Can you? Madam, I didn't calculate that's the percentage. Maybe it is very important to know the uh, how much of a subunit is involved, no? Because uh, depending on that only you plan your uh, treatment. Okay. Yeah. So, what are the subunits that are affected in your opinion over here? Right ala, right lateral wall, and small part, part of the tip of nose. Okay, once you're actually planning out a 0.5 centimeters section. Yes, sir. Right. So, uh, so what is the size approximately sir, of the station? You said 1 into 1.5 centimeters. 1 right? into 1.5 centimeter. After the excision, it will be 1.5 into 2 centimeters. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, what are the other other than the description over here? No, what are the other things that you look for before you actually go in for surgery? Uh, sir, uh, I, I will do a uh, in intra. Sir, is yes, a sir. diabetic, right? Uh, sir, is a diabetic and it is hypertensive. Okay, so you have to uh, control check the for all. Control the type. Yeah. Investigation wise, will you do any other local investigation besides what you have uh, mentioned? No, sir. Um, I can do a dermoscopic examination for the ulcer. To uh, in um, intranasally, intranasally, if you, if you want to uh, sir, intranasally, we can do a uh, nasal endoscopy. Yeah, this is basically we don't know how much is. Yeah, how much in the depth it has gone. No? So for looking at that, you can actually look for that and you can actually go in for a bimanual palpation also to just understand whether the uh, mucosa of the uh, the lining of the nose is also involved. 
okay. on uh, the nasal examination the ulcer is not fixed to the lower lateral cartilage okay fine right what what would you plan to do for this patient sir uh, uh, sir after when the uh, frozen section is uh, complete margin is negative after a 0.5 cm uh, clear 0.5 cm margin i will go for a uh, superiorly based two stage nasolabial flap cover in two stages two stages okay so that's your first choice as first choice is there any other uh, your uh, some life quotes uh, sir uh, my life quote is i have a vertical paramedian forehead flap from the lateral side and rotated 180 degree and to cover the defect okay okay so these are the two things or do you have any other plans okay so right so can you just uh, tell us about your first plan so uh, how is it based how is that particular flap based how would you actually take it which is a depth at which you go on all this can you just explain about this particular flap or after uh, after the excision of the tumor uh, i will uh, uh, make a template of the defect um, and okay. um, the uh, and the contralateral side is normal so template of contralateral is made to create a mirror image of the tissue true defect and then the template of the defect is uh, transferred to the transferred along the nas uh, nasolabial region and uh, then the flap design is made by reverse plan okay and, uh, and then sir the uh, the flap is uh, the actually the flap is the flap is elevated uh, just above the this uh, facial muscles so uh, so that i can include uh, the all perforates from the facial artery then uh, after raising the flap then i insert is given to the defect what is the yep. relationship of the facial artery vis a vis the ala uh, sir uh, facial artery after uh, entering to the face after closing the mandible it will give uh, alar branch to the no no and at, the, at, the lat, at the at the at the lateral border of the ala where exactly in relation to the lateral border of the ala where is the facial artery uh, about 1 cm lateral to the correct 1 cm lateral to it okay so you are going to base how how lateral, wide is your lateral to the flap going ala to be? okay so that is lateral to the ala and then further distally when it goes further distally this is sir i i made the flap by reverse planning so I, after re, um, after this time i will rotate the flap into the defect and insert is given okay and uh, uh, now the thing is no how much of your uh, lesion are you going to you said 1 cm all around are you going to just take it like that or are you going to uh, is there some other way that you will you will see based on subunit Uh, uh, based on subunit, sir, he um, said that if more than fifty percentage of the nasal subunit is affected, we have to recreate the full nasal subunit. Full subunit, yeah. So here, will it be any any subunits will be fully affected like that more than fifty percent? Uh, sir, uh, no, not actually, sir. Unlikely, unlikely. Unlikely, okay. sir. So, so then you, no. yeah. So then you are going to take only that particular lesion, and then you are going to do that, right? Okay. and sir i will go and then i will close the uh, second defect by primary coat just um, elevating the cheek tissue okay then sir, uh, sir then after uh, the three weeks and the flaps are all settled then um, uh, i will 
divide the pedicle and uh, uh, for after some raising the edge of the flower uh, inset i will uh, do a thinning to to get a good contour and when will you do that for after 3 weeks of when you are going to do the ins i mean when they are doing the flap division itself you will do the uh, thinning of the flap as uh, for only uh, i just uh, elevate only the lateral margin of the flap okay and do the thinning and just again give the insert okay, okay. and then uh, your insert what about rest of the flap no that was there the bridge portion no what will you do will you discard it or will you keep it back or what will you do for um, uh, if it is causing any distortion in the region Mm. I will get back to the flap. Otherwise, I discard yeah, it. Yeah, as tissue. far as possible, you have to discard it because if you are keeping it back, then you are going to have two scars, and one scar is going to be very visible. Otherwise, the scar is going to lie in the interface between the nose and the cheek, which will not be that visible after some time. It will actually merge, depending on the nasal label uh, fold, you know, it will actually merge with the nasal piece also. Usually, only that the, the top portion you will have a small uh, kind of a uh, uh, over there. Okay. Doctor Lakshmi. Yes, Sandeep. Uh, yeah. Radha, sir, you ask. He's my student. Uh, Dimi, why did you choose uh, nasolabial as the first plan? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, because I want to uh, uh, display that his because it is uh, can be easily reached and the uh, forehead scar can be avoided. Doctor Dimi, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. No, sir. We can hear. We can. One second, uh, Dr. Uh, Sandeep sir will join again. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, has uh, the biopsy, biopsy been proved in this case? Number one. Yes, sir. It is biopsy proven. It is basal cell uh, carcinoma. Hello, uh, biopsy uh, came as squamous cell carcinoma. Biopsy came as squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. So if it has come out as squamous cell carcinoma, what is the point in just giving 0.5 centimeter, especially in this area? It's unexposed area. Yes. What should be your margin? Sir, um, in case of uh, biopsy, uh, again, I will go for a 0.5 centimeter clearance and uh, based on my frozen section, uh -huh. I will. Yes. Based on the frozen section, I will give, give further clearance if needed. Okay. So suppose if you if if your clearance says inadequate, 0.5 centimeter, so you will again and go inside and then do an excision, and then excision. if uh, suppose if the defect then becomes I, big. So when the defect becomes big, I will go for a uh, vertical paramedian forehead flap. So. What Based are the subunits the, will be involved? If it is squamous cell carcinoma, what are the subunits will be involved? Sir, the more than 50% of the ELA will be lost. 
and yes. part of the nasal tip and lateral wall also the lesion may encroach into the other defect may affect the dorsum of the nostrils it is a full thickness defect you will develop yes, isn't sir, it it's a full thickness defect when you in uh, see uh, when it becomes a squamous cell carcinoma naturally you have to remove the part of the lateral cartilage lower lateral cartilage also lateral cartilage also isn't it so it yes, becomes sir. a full thickness through and through defect including okay. the mucosa so okay, now sir. you tell me the reconstructive challenges or reconstructive options for it sir when it's a full thickness defect we have to give the um, uh, give the cover support mm -hmm. and lining yes so um, for my um, first choice is is a uh, ipsilateral mm -hmm. um, vertical paramedian forehead flap yes based on the supratrochlear vessel mm -hmm. and i will extend uh, to the lesion and i will extend the flap because the patient has got a more uh, got good recession mm. so um, then i will fold my uh, nasal label flap to cover the uh, lining also okay lining the, how will you how will you give the lining sir i will um, i will fold my nasal label flap to give the lining huh? nasal label you are talking about for no, no, no I, i will give the forehead flap fold the fold mm. the forehead flap to give the lining yes lining and cover a lining and so cover so then what yeah then how, how do how do you manage the donor area um sir um the base of the flap can be easily um primarily closed mm. and uh, the the, uh, the upper part of the donor area mm. um if it is uh, not primarily it not available to for a primary closure i would um, put a collagen and allow the area to get reepithelialized by secondary intention and by contrast <laughs> no 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 you are not supposed to do it in forehead such kind of things okay hello ha uh, sir when you when you are able to close primarily only forehead flap should be chosen in all possibilities you should be able to close this defect primary defect in this case okay okay, okay. so you sir. can close it primarily understood there yes, are certain sir. ways of closing it there are certain ways of closing it yes i will um, yeah. put hmm? incisions in the forehead so that i will try for primary closure by taking the tissue from the lateral side of forehead yes you can definitely advance and close it and there are certain ways of methods of closing also and um, easily it can be closed so when you plan for a primary closure in the forehead only you should choose these yes. flaps not by putting skin graft or something like that that okay. be an aesthetic uh, deformity okay and uh, okay, suppose sir. if you do a flap today when do you want to divide the flap so, um, sir uh, Uh, sir in this case uh, actually the support is also be needed so mm. after 3 weeks mm. of insert when the flap is stable mm. uh, from a uh, scar is stable i will um, uh, give an incision on the this uh, lower part and i will put an alr cartilage for alr pattern cartilage from the congal mucosa mm -hmm. congal Not cartilage okay. Mm. congal contral congal cartilage mm. um and some thinning of the covering of the uh, flap done and then insert is again given then after 3 weeks i divide the pedicle so that i can uh, i will do the forehead flap in three stages okay see where do you want to insert the cartilage what are the prerequisites for inserting a cartilage sir although the uh, ala is uh, have no cartilage but uh, if we will not give support the the uh, that, that that is okay that is okay so when you when you are dividing the flap where do you want to give the cartilage keep the cartilage do you do it like this of course you can do that to... that's a via that is a via media approach okay so what is the ideal time in when you are when you are staging it you can stage it appropriately 
you understand okay um, how sir otherwise uh, I, we can put also in the primary um, primary first stage of the flap itself we can put a cartilage but the because of the bulk of the flap i prefer not see dr demi you don't understand my uh, this one do see, it in the second are, stage see you can do it in stages sir. okay you sir. can do the flap in two stages divide the flap allow it to settle then you can put, put the cartilage that is number 1 number 2 is as you said when you are uh, dividing you can insert the cartilage but it's very very you should thin it prudently otherwise you lose the flap and uh, the cartilage gets exposed that is sir. when you do it uh, when uh, your plan in your plan what you are doing it sometimes you may end up in disasters sir that, and the other one is what is manikis concept manikis concept Mm. Okay. Sir, sorry, I I don't know. Anybody? Manikis concept. Sir, Manikis concept is the subunit principle concept. Subunit principle. And how do you how do you do that? Um, sir, if the fifty percentage of the one subunit is lost, we have to reconstruct the subunit no, that, fully. That, that is okay. That is okay. and 50% uh -huh. of unit is lost you reconstruct uh -huh. the uh, subunit fully uh -huh. but Sorry, what i am asking 50 uh -huh. sir how will you how will you how is it different from the traditional reconstruction many case concept anybody in the audience group there are there are three stages ah uh, yeah uh, in the first stage we'll put the flap in the second mm. stage we'll again lift the flap but we'll not divide it mm. so in the first stage we'll put the flap as well as as, as the cartilage Uh, cartilage cartilage framework the second stage we'll raise the flap without uh, uh, dividing the pedicle and we'll again thin the flap and uh, do contouring of the flap and in the third stage uh, we'll divide the flap so total it will take about 6 weeks or something so it will but the contouring is nice which is it this is called as in many cases you do like this yes sir okay suppose you you as as he says he wants to put a flap and in the second stage he wants to insert a cartilage what are the issues mm. issues for the uh, flap was uh, the distal part of the uh, vascularity of the flap can be yeah, because you are thinning the flap also you are thinning the flap also you are um, uh, and inserting the cartilage you may go in for a problem okay okay so allow the flap to settle down nicely then you can always lift it and then put a cartilage whatsoever it is okay and uh, um what are the functions of the nose by the way the uh, what are the functions of the nose uh, so helps in uh, inspire and smiling and respiration uh -huh. smiling <laughs> smiling sorry sorry um, smiling not sir that means the depressor septa should act not sir <laughs> I, i smelling i i answering like any any other person smelling. what are the functions of the nose to assess the smell yes see the functions and are what are the functions anybody can tell Filtration, smell, sir. Uh, then moisture. Uh, the the air we take will get moist. Then because of the moisture, will get so. Uh, won't see, keep the dry the air. Uh, see, it does three functions. One is filtration, humidification. Then partly it helps in the smell also, isn't it? And breathing. Understood, sir. Doctor Demi, sir, sir. You you I understand what I say? Filtration. filtration of um, yeah. dust and other particles larger particles that is done by what vibrisse vibrisse okay sir. then humidification humidification as the air enters it gets humidified so humidified air only goes inside our respiratory system respiratory otherwise system. it will produce mucus plugs sir tenacious so humidification occurs there then it also helps in what 
breathing also breathing and smell mm-hmm. all these things so see by doing a nasal reconstruction can you make it a functional reconstruction see the reconstruction are of two types it should satisfy two aims what are the aims one is mm-hmm. aesthetic and one function. is aesthetic and functional function. okay Sorry. aesthetic you are trying to reconstruct it in subunits and all those things so now i am coming to a different part of it which is altogether a different concept okay sir so what is the functionality of nasal reconstruction the, i will sir, tell you i will tell you i will put you this example suppose if there is a ring finger avulsion amputation or bania grade 3 or so okay sir you understand sir uh, if the uh, avulsion amputation the ring finger is not salvageable you will be trying to give a groin flap sir with the skeleton if the skeleton is available you just try to give a groin flap so that becomes that becomes anatomical finger anatomical sir. finger but do you get any function in that you don't get uh-huh. any function so unless you do some tendon transfers or tendon grafts or something like that then only it becomes mobile finger which is useful to the functional finger isn't it sir so okay so that is to make it physiological and then functional but similarly here you put a blob of tissue from the forehead and put lr cartilage also how do you make it functional in other words mm. we have told certain functions what are the functions which you can recreate in this sir um, if we can include the uh, in forehead we can include the hair from the region yes hair you can, can include and then you can make it a little bit functional you can functional. add filtration function to that yeah. okay yes, sir okay okay so sir. filtration function to that to a certain extent of course the epithelium everything will change sir okay what is the epithelium of the respiratory tract epithelium <laughs> uh, oh. see we have we have now reached a level we have now reached a level you should try to put functionality into reconstructions where so you were wherever it is possible okay okay so sir. you you try to include little bit of your encroaching into the hairline and try to include little bit of hair follicles into it so that you can add to that also okay okay, okay sir so that it will function like a vibrisse so vibrisse. that can be done filtration function can be to a certain extent i mean it may or may not because it all depends on the different epithelium but okay. still you can if you fit in if you are including it if it comes there is no harm in it okay okay, okay so sir. that we can do that then uh, this adding the cartilage either you should stage it or you should add it initially okay there okay. are other techniques called prefabrication also <clears throat> wherein you can prefabricate the flap in the forehead itself put the cartilage and then take it up once it settles then you can take it to the recipient area also that is also possible but usually by and large the forehead skin is very thick skin so sometimes you may not require cartilage also compared to the nasolabial skin which is very thin the forehead skin is very thick okay yes sir so if you want to excise the squamosal carcinoma giving adequate margins you may be i may have to borrow the tissue from elsewhere especially the forehead which is the commonest site okay understood okay sir and uh, personally unilateral nasal labial flap it's not that favored okay okay, okay sir uh, forehead flap is a better option in this case yes okay hmm? so so once you do all those things how will you manage the flap settles nicely you are putting the cartilage graft meanwhile what will you do your report comes out as squamosal carcinoma what um, will you do sir um, previous patient already came with a bypass report of squamosal carcinoma in this case mm. then uh, i want to i will i want to do a mri scan of the 
ከዳንክ ቱ አሰስ ተኤክስቴንድ ኦፍ ዘ ሊሽን አንድ አልሶ እኒ ሊምፍ ኖት ሜታስተስ ዊል ዩ ኖት ዊል ዩ ኖት ቴክ ዩር ኦንኮሎጂ ኮሊግ ኢንቱ ዩር ኮንሰልቴሽን once the biopsy comes out hello will you not hello ha sir your voice is tired and here actually yeah will you not take your oncology colleague into your yes surely sir i will yeah and then you, you may have to get an oncology opinion once the biopsy comes out okay in the first itself we should have discussed with the oncologist and make a plan okay and otherwise at Sir. least once you do the reconstruction and the biopsy comes out then you may have to refer him to the oncologist so that any other adjuvant treatment is required which he can decide okay 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 sir okay so uh, what will you do with the remaining flap for it flap sir um yeah if the forehead flap the base of base of the forehead flap is um having some causing some distortion to the eyebrow uh uh i will um, this base of the flap should be returned and rest of the forehead flap is discarded so what are the in other words what are the segments of the forehead flap Se- mm. Se- the forehead flap has of- got a yeah it's got a base mm. parts of the flap base it says that then there is a base for a flap base yes. then there is a carrier segment then the business end once the business, business end is given inset then the bridge segment is discarded and the base of the flap part of the base of the flap and the bridge segment is returned okay sir otherwise sir. what will happen distortion of the um this eyebrow malalignment can occur malalignment can occur so these are all the things okay okay, okay sir so basically you have to manage it in stages so why is yes. it not a rhinophima uh this sir, lesion have uh, you got a rhinophima the... yes sir it is a sebaceous gland hypertrophy uh, and sir the here the patient has got a um, gradual increase in size for the past 3 years and associated with bleeding from the lesion ulceration also also go to the ulceration and the lgs are uh, uh, raised edges okay and uh, he has got a chronic exposure to sunlight as he is a farmer mm. so that sir my diagnosis was okay basal cell carcinoma okay that's right Sandeep? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's more or less he has uh, covered most of the thing. In between, some problem was there with my uh, system, so I could not listen to more, uh, a bit of the discussion that is going on. I think it's just fine. So, uh, just one uh, one question, no? or uh, just one last one. So normally, when you go for a local, in the case of nose, no? when you actually decide going for the local flap or should we go for the distant flap, that is whether you want to go for local uh, or uh, this one, nasal ABL, Zimani, uh, those kind of flaps, no? or whether you want to go for a uh, distant flap, is decided on the size of the lesion. Usually, 1.5 centimeters, less than 1.5 centimeters, you can manage with the local flaps. Uh, between 1.5 and 2 cm it is a plus minus and about 2 cm 100% you have to go for a distant flap so in this particular case it would have been more around 2 cm so most likely it would have been a better choice to actually plus it and talk about the medium for it flap for this case okay right. uh, what is the plane in which you uh, dissect the uh, for it flap uh in the um uh distal part of the flap i will uh, raise the flap in um, subcutaneous level as much thin as possible then on proceeding i will enter the um, loose areolar plane just above the periosteum and on uh, reaching the eyebrow about 1 to 2 cm uh, 1.1 to 1.5 cm above the eyebrow 
I will take the superior steel plane so as to include the supratrochlear vessels. Uh, will you do anything to the vessels to actually increase, the, uh, say, suppose this particular flap required you to actually reconstruct the columella, the patient had a low hairline. So to actually, uh, let us say, to increase the reach of the flap, will you be able to do something? Um, sir, uh, um, I will take a, an oblique flap so that the okay, you will go for uh, length, of the, the flap, the length of the flap can be increased. Okay. Mm. Sir, can you increase the pedicle length? Pedicle length, sir. Mm. Only up to this, uh, I supraorbital region. The maximum we can defect up to the super. You can orbital. actually, if you, if you can actually, you can actually carefully dissect out that there it, that uh, there might be a bony bridge or it could be just a small uh, groove in which the vessels are lying. So in case the bony bridge is there, very carefully you can actually dissect out that area and knock off the bony bridge and let out the vessels outside that area and uh, thereby increasing the length of the, uh, the reach. No? The distal reach also can be increased by this, this maneuver. Okay, so that is normally done. Usually it is not required. For most of the cases we would be able to Get it. Usually, it happens for ladies. So, when you have some problem for ladies, then you will require all these things because uh, you can't afford to have a uh, hair growth on the columella. You can do that. You can make it. You can go for laser ablation or not. Then these are something. Okay. Yeah. Aradash, I think that is it. No. Lakshmi. Doctor Lakshmi, is there anything else you want to ask the student? Uh, I think that. Completes everything. Anyone else has got questions? Yeah, I think there are a few questions that have come up in the chat. Shall, shall I just go to it? Uh, does forehead flap need cartilage support? I think already that is uh, that has been answered. So, so this, uh, extend the incision proximally towards the medial campus. Madhavi. Uh, oh, that's to increase the length of the flap. Increase the length of the flap. Well, yeah. Lining options other than folded forehead flap. Is there a, yeah. Is, uh, uh, is there any other options other than folded forehead flap for getting uh, the lining? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we can uh, take the septal flaps to uh, give the that like mm. okay silateral or contralateral septal lining can be taken when do you take the septal flap that's actually when you need a cartilage support also okay it's a muco perichondrial flap muco perichondrial flap mm. uh, chondro mucosal flap actually will you pre laminate your flap Yes, sir. Also, an option for lining the relamination of the forehead flap with skin graft. It be done, but yeah, but when there's a malignancy, something okay. BCC means then it's okay, but otherwise, as far as possible, uh, in cases of squamosal carcinoma and all, you might not actually pre laminate the flap. Okay, there's another question about flap delay. Is there a requirement for a flap delay in this case? Yes, sir, surely, sir. After, uh, sir uh, in this case, means, sir, I have uh, supra uh, nasal label or forehead. Mm. In uh, both cases. Both in case of. When would you actually? Uh, when would you actually delay the flap? Usually, uh, uh, I will do my delay after three weeks of flap insert. It's a flap get settled and sorry delay after your flap insert. And so that means um, after three weeks I will delay my flap. After three weeks. The question is, uh, uh, how are you going to delay your flap? Um, sir, already the flap is inserted and I. I will divide the pedicle after three weeks. 
no no the question is no i think that person that i had a question was let me just see it was asked by i think madhavi let me see the question is now how do you delay the flood free of delay yeah that is what they, they that, that's exactly what they wanted to ask no? okay matthew george yeah. before you before you take your flap no would you actually delay it how long would you delay it is it required to delay it usually usually for these flaps unless you have actually uh, having some issues like severe di- uncontrolled diabetes and all no precious flap usually normally we don't delay these flaps nadarshan do you delay the flaps okay usually it's not the so flaps are not exceptionally large flap we might yeah yeah very large flaps you might have to delay it and uh, yeah that, that is that is it. then is there a possibility of using bilobed flaps over here um, in this case in this case of um, bilobed flap are usually described as uh, defects up to 1.5 cm so No. you can go up to 2 cm also you can go for uh, bilobed flaps actually okay you can go so uh, what is done as part of the uh, uh, would you take it superiorly based or inferiorly based mm. yes, sir, I, uh, in this like particular the, case you might be lateral, taking it actually superior, lateral superiorly based, based no? lateral yeah that's what right. i mean inferiorly based inferiorly okay. based uh, with one part of the flap would be in the cheek area other part would be in the lateral wall and the, uh, the lateral wall part would actually extend into the uh, cover the defect and the cheek portion would cover the lateral wall and primary cheek area would actually close it primarily in this case if it is maybe some, somewhere in between 1.5 and 2 cm maybe we can actually attempt the bilobe flap okay uh, usually it is preferred to slightly smaller lesions okay anything else lakshmi uh, there was another question uh, can you use the nasolabial flap for lining i think you can hmm. definitely you can do the nasolabial keep the nasolabial as a lining and uh, you can use the forehead for reconstructing the cover in that case you may yeah, not you can even use it as a you can even use it as i think on a single stage one yes. also no, without yes. one a delay like if you actually deepitalize a small portion and push it under the ala mm-hmm. you can actually even get away without even uh, de- mm-hmm. um, without even having as a two stage procedure so you stage. have to turn it inside out so that the skin yeah, surface yeah, 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 yeah. on the ala uh, on the ala lining yeah. anything else uh, anyone wants to ask then i think uh, Uh, I think that is it. Now I think all the uh, can fam flap be used for lining. Yes, sir. That's again another choice, but it depends on the location. Maybe, of- what is your opinion? Yeah, fam flap also can be used depending on the location because that's also very robust flap that can also be done. But can won't be it taken be from the nasal labial flap is used? Ah, yeah, yeah. It can be uh, fam flap can be used. Uh, now dr Go- gokul balak is asking whether the naso label flap won't it be too thick if it is used as a lining dr lakshmi uh, yeah it will be thick but you can thin it in later stages in the second stage yeah uh, i think that's it i think naso label flap it will be a, oh, yeah, a yeah, discussion about defect pandeep hello discussion about neck defect sandeep yeah. yeah 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 see i would i would put it little uh, categorically regarding the lining when we put when we take forehead flap when we yeah. fold it that itself will be very thick so when you take forehead flap and then take naso label flap also for lining it will be too thick then it will be difficult see when no, i think this is just a general flap. question no no uh, radhashan this not specifically regarding the thing this is a general question no, 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 that's what lining that's what I, be... general question yeah and the fam flap fam flap for lining will be thick once again and when you doing a total nasal reconstruction some of things some of the, these things can be utilized but given this defect i think a folded forehead flap or a forehead flap with a pre lamination with skin graft would suffice but 
if you want to put a cartilage in between it's better to go in for a folded forward flap because that will be um, easy for the cartilage to be inserted okay compared to when you put a in the question then, uh, yes this is another question regarding how will you actually uh, cover the donor defect after a large forward flap large forehead flap see the forehead flap can be closed whatsoever it is most of the times there are certain ways of methods which is given in all the textbooks which we can close it we have closed up to 2 2.5 cm of forehead flap which we can close only thing is you are not supposed to cause any distortion of the aesthetic aesthetic distortion especially the eyebrow and uh, all these areas otherwise we can just close it up to 2 2.5 cm 2, 2 cm we have closed it and we can also do a temporary stretching and try to close it mana part mein gaya tha part jaye na sandeep ye koi nahi matlab yahan na sandeep take a set i think we can close it up somebody is hello yeah somebody is interruption i think I think yeah, we have yeah. answered most of the questions. Isn't most it? of the answer. Yeah. yeah. So the only only doubt would be, you know, and I think many of the Western textbooks they say that you leave the donor side of the median forehead flap uh, just raw and let it heat by secondary yeah. intake. In our patients, it will give a very bad scar. So that is why worst case scenario, when if you want, you might have to even put a small skin graft later. Put a skin graft and actually you can close it up. But okay that's i think we have covered all sandeep sandeep has gone out i think i think we can wind, wind up wind up yeah Okay, thank you, Dr. Lakshmi. Thank you. I, I think uh, Radha Shyam will tell the word of thanks to Dr. Lakshmi. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Dr. Lakshmi. <laughs> Lakshmi, Lakshmi, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. thanks, thanks a lot for sparing your time. Yeah. How is the? To all the uh, participants. Yeah, we thank all the people also, yeah. and then maybe we assemble for the next week. And yeah. you have to thank Dr. Selvan also from Chengalpattu who has joined in this forum. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> Doctor Selvam has joined. Selvam. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, I've been just listening to you the way you are steering the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah enjoying the two hours. Okay. Yeah. Thank Doctor. Thanks Lakshmi. a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For inviting me this, you know, for inviting yeah. me this lecture. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thanks, all friends. Thank Sandeep, over to you. Sandeep. I think he has already quit. Okay then. Bye everyone. Good night.